Welcome to Still Speak Podcast. So, I want to do something tonight, so just bear with me here. I want to revisit the body cam footage of Gabby and Brian's domestic incident that occurred on August 12th. And I actually even hate having to say Gabby and Brian in the same sentence. This incident is bugging me. And I have this nagging feeling and I just was like, you know what? I need to go point by point about this video. And I know the footage is at this point old news. And I've talked about it before on this channel several times actually. One time was to mention how Gabby showed signs of abuse from the second the officer had approached the van. And there were other times I talked about the footage as well. And I'm not doing this video with the goal of attacking the officers, but just trying to understand what happened here a little bit better and how it plays a role or may relate to what ends up happening 15 to 18 days later. And this is going to be part one. And parts of the footage, I'm not even going to you know, bother discussing. There's a lot of things that are, are kind of dumb and um then we'll do part two and in this one i'm actually gonna stop at the point where the officers are talking with one another and discussing how to handle the situation and when they were coming to the conclusion that it was gabby that was the primary aggressor out of the two and let's do a little background Yet again, just as a reminder, on why they even got pulled over to begin with. So they were at the Moonflower, right? And there was two different witnesses, we have now learned, that called law enforcement. Which tells us that whatever was happening between this couple was severe enough that two different people felt uneasy about it and wanted to call it in and and, uh, alert the authorities, right? Two different ones. And... Again, this is just a reminder so that we can keep it in context of what we're going to be discussing. And it has now been made clear that one witness had called the Moab City Police and the other one called the Grand County Sheriff's Office. The one who called Grand County was the 911 caller who we heard say clear as day in audio that the gentleman was hitting and slapping the female. They walked down the sidewalk and he continued to hit her and then they got in the van and they took off. The one who called Moab City Police was the one in the written in, written statement that we've seen in groups. And the written statement witness named Chris, his story was a smidge different. However, he did mention they were fighting over a phone it seemed like and that it appeared that Brian was trying to keep Gabby out of the van and leave her there. And in his statement, he says he thinks that somebody else had called in as well because he saw a man doing so. He also mentioned he was walking when he saw the altercation. And the one in the 911 called said that he was driving when he saw the altercation. And we also got to hear that the dispatch... I'm sorry. We heard the dispatch call audio and that audio was labeled that it came from the moab police dispatch but i'm not totally sold on that because it sounds like it was the grand county dispatch due to the fact the dispatcher ends up repeating what the actual 911 caller said and what the 911 caller did was call grand county so officers in the field were told about what the grand county 911 caller said which was that he was hitting and slapping her. And after working on this, I think there was a big miscommunication, unfortunately. The officer who went looking for the van, it seems was going off what the dispatch originally was saying until he saw the van hit a curb. And then it kind of changed the entire story because now they just hit a curb in front of him. And so that added to what needed to be discussed with the couple. And the second officer on the scene with the long beard that you see in the video said in his incident report that he had stopped at the Moonflower to see if there was any witnesses there before responding because he had heard that other officers on the radio were looking for the van. And since he had to drive past the Moonflower, he decided to stop there. And he did see a witness 
which was not the 911 audio that we heard. He encountered the written statement witness named Chris, and he got his name and number and left. Later, when he got to the scene, while the main officer was speaking with the couple and trying to figure things out, the bearded bearded officer who stopped at the Moonflower called the witness that he had encountered at the Moonflower. And when he was done, he approached the main officer who was working the incident, and he said, I called the witness and recorded it. When they walked away from Brian and up the road to talk about it, he starts to tell this main officer what the witness said. And a second witness was never mentioned between these two officers. Okay? So I think the main officer was under the assumption that this was the exact same witness that dispatch had told him about when he was trying to locate the van. And the one to say that he was hitting her. And I think he might have assumed that dispatch got it wrong. Or that dispatch had relayed what the witness said wrong. Or or at least I hope he assumed. I'm not usually a fan of assuming. But in this circumstance, I'd rather it be that he assumed that it was the same witness. um, Rather than to think that he intentionally chose to ignore the fact that a witness was saying that Brian was hitting and slapping Gabby, right? I don't want that to be the case. I want it to be that he assumed, which you should never do, (laughs) rather than it was intentional. And it wasn't actually until this entire ordeal was over that they got the official written statement from Chris, the witness. And in his statement, it was mentioned that there was a second person who had called in about the dispute. So now that we did all that, let's... Let's get into this, okay? Because I got some things to say. I need to get it off my chest. So the main officer approaches the car. He asks their names. After they told the officer the names, he asked them, you know, what was going on? Most of you have seen this, so you've heard a lot of this. But I'm breaking it down because I'm going to add in some things here and there. And so he asked what was going on. And before, this is key. Before Gabby even began to speak, Brian looked at her for her to answer the officer. He didn't try to answer. He immediately looked to her to answer. And she looked at the officer and she says she's sorry that they had been fighting, you know, this morning. Which I want to note here, it was not morning when they were stopped. It was actually... um, around four, almost five o'clock in the evening. So this makes me assume that they had been fighting since the morning because she actually says morning several times and so does he. He keeps referring to it as morning and that's not morning, (laughs) that's evening. And even prior to that would have been afternoon. So it's odd to me that this was said. And then Gabby says, some personal issues and as she said that she looked straight ahead so she didn't make eye contact with the officer when she said that it was personal issues and brian continued to watch her as she was speaking and and he ends up interjecting and as he did he looked back and forth between gabby and the officer and it seemed to be that he wanted to control with what was being said in my opinion at least because Gabby had said they were fighting, and he said that it had been a long day, and they had been camping yesterday, and then he mentions camping and flies, and he says a bunch of random stuff, little stuff, that was totally odd, like he was trying to change the subject, or possibly change the tone of the conversation, because she started off with, we've been fighting this morning, personal issues, And then Brian apologizes for hitting what he called a bump, but it was a curb. And as he spoke, Gabby was still looking ahead out the front window of the van. She never looked at him when he was speaking like he had when she was speaking. And then Gabby turns to the officer and says, I was distracting him. So she immediately volunteered ownership over why they hit the curb. Before Brian even tried to explain, she answered it. So, 
And when he says, when she says this, she's looking at the officer, okay? And she's told to get out of the van, and her and the officer kind of walk off to the side, you know, which this is to give her an opportunity to tell him why she's crying, you know, not in front of him. And she starts off with saying that, you know, some days I have really bad OCD. I was just cleaning and I was apologizing to him and saying, I'm sorry, I'm so mean. Sometimes I have OCD and sometimes I get really frustrated. And during the time that she's saying all this, she was very clearly upset and she was sort of trying to catch her breath. So her thoughts were kind of all over the place. But it does strike me that she was saying that she was cleaning and apologizing. I mean, why are you apologizing? Because, what, you're cleaning? Is that why you're apologizing? It's a little uh, hard to understand that. But she also could have meant that she was cleaning and upset from the mess. So she was apologizing to him because she was so upset. We don't really know. Because she was very upset when she was trying to explain this. And she says that she said to him, I'm so sorry, I'm so mean. And then she adds that she has OCD. And she gets frustrated. And then she goes back to talking about mean. And she said, I'm not like mean to him. I guess my vibe is really like I'm in a bad mood. I was saying sorry if I'm in a bad mood. And this is interesting as well because she said that she said sorry for being mean. But then claims that she wasn't mean. And she guesses, that's a key word, it was her vibe, which makes me wonder if maybe she just seemed pissy and Brian made some sort of comment about her being mean, right? So if, like, she just had this demeanor of being upset or angry about something, he might have been like, what are you so upset about? You know how guys do. Girls do it, too, in a different way. Uh, so it does make me wonder because she's like, well, you know, I'm apologizing for being mean. But then she changes it and says, well, I wasn't being mean to him. My, you know, I guess it was just my vibe. And then she said, you know, and I said, I'm sorry if I'm in a bad mood. So that's a little interesting there, but we'll never know what she really meant there, obviously. And then she goes on to say that she was really stressed and she had a lot of work she was doing on the computer. And she says again, this morning, which was hours and hours prior to this incident. And the officer asked her about what she did for a living. And she says that he works for a, a juice bar, right? She says an organic juice bar. And it's a little odd that she offered up what he did instead of what she did because the officer asked what she did. And Gabby explains then that she quit her job and she had been a nutritionist. And when she says this, she kind of throws her hands up in the air when she's talking about being a prior nutritionist. And it kind of came across as like she was trying to make it like it wasn't a big deal that she had been a nutritionist, almost downplaying uh, what she used to do. And then she says she quit that job to travel the country and that she was trying to start a blog and had built building her website so she was really stressed out. And then she says, you know, quote, but he does not really believe I can do any of it, unquote. Which is really sad to hear, right? Because we know how the story ended and we're hearing from Gabby's own mouth that Brian did not support her in this vlog, blog, whatever you want to call it, thing that she wanted to do. And this offering or mentioning of him not being supportive is a pretty big deal. And she didn't need to include that. Um, you know, he, she didn't need to include that he didn't support her or didn't think that she was capable of starting this vlog. And you got to wonder why she felt like he didn't. Was it because he straight up told her he didn't? Or because of his behavior when she would spend too much time working on it. And you also have to wonder why he didn't think she was capable of putting together a vlog of their travels. 
I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of knowledge, experience, or education to do it, but why would you not have any type of faith that your girlfriend could do this? And I do believe this because I don't know why she would have said this otherwise. What was the reasoning for that? And then Gabby continued with her jumbled thoughts. And I want to say it's really hard. It is. It's really hard to watch her in this state knowing what happens later, right? You're looking at this girl and she's clearly very upset. And we all know what happens to her, right? And it's just really heartbreaking. So Gabby continues and she goes, I don't know. He was down there. I don't know. But then she doesn't finish that thought. And we never really actually find out what she meant by down there. Down where? No idea. And she says again, we've been fighting all morning. This morning thing is really odd to me. I can only think that the only thing that comes to my mind with the fact that she keeps saying it and he eventually says it too is is that they had to have been fighting all day and it started in the morning and this is why they just kept referencing the morning. Or they were trying to put focus on the morning instead of what happened in the afternoon. But I doubt that because they were separated and yet they were both still saying morning. And Gabby then says that he wouldn't let her in the car before. And the officer asked why not. And she said that he had told her to calm down. And then she went on to say, but I was perfectly calm. He really stresses me out. So this was her way of saying she was upset because he wanted her to calm down. But she was calm. And everybody knows the worst thing to say to anybody who's upset is the words calm down. (laughs) Right? Uh, that's definitely not what you want to say to somebody who's upset. And, you know, she had said that it was a rough morning. Again, she mentions the morning. And the officer then tells her he's going to let her in his SUV so that she can get AC, relax, and take a breath, which is so... And I say that because she literally just told him that Brian told her to calm down and to take a breather. And he's telling her, get in my SUV, calm down, take a breather, and calm down and relax are the same thing. So this kind of grinds my nerve a little bit that he said this after she literally just expressed that she was upset because he told her to calm down. So the officer helps her into the van, he shuts the door, and he walks over to the van that Brian was still sitting in the driver's seat of the van. And Brian was actually speaking to another officer at the time who was outside the van on the passenger side talking to Brian through the window. And when Brian notices the main officer coming up to the car, he leans forward uh, to see the officer and immediately asks him, did you talk to my fiancé? I mean, duh, Brian. Where did you think he went? Where do you think she went? Of course, he talked to her. But okay, Brian. So the officer didn't hear his question. He was probably thinking the same thing. Like, what a dumb question. And that's why he didn't hear it. And Brian says, did you talk to Gabby already? And at this point, Brian's head was tilted up and he was making eye contact with the officer and the officer said yes and then brian starts nodding his head in the same way yes and says okay and then he goes to sit back and in my opinion he had a very nervous demeanor like he was concerned that gabby had said something about him and he was waiting for the officer to say what she said so then the main officer tells him to get out of the van you can tell by his reaction he's still very nervous about why he's being asked to get out of the van and This is kind of crazy to me, but both of these officers let him get out of the van and walk around the car and walk over to where they were without checking him first for any weapons. What in the world is that about? 
And it wasn't after they talked to him for a few minutes before they finally asked him to lift up his shirt and see if he's got anything on him. So that's odd. Why would you not check him for weapons when he got out of the car? So Brian begins to explain, saying that he gets that she gets really worked up sometimes, and he tries to distance himself from her. He said, like, I locked the car and I walked away from her is what happened this morning. So here he's saying the same thing, this morning thing. And it's that she's trying to start up her own little vlog and everything. So I'm going to pause there because... He calls her blog little. And I, and I might use blog or vlog depending on what I'm feeling like. It's the same thing. One's a video, a blog, and one's like a written blog. Same difference. But he calls it little. And it's not used in the context that it's a little one, right? It's in the, using in the context of uh, describing this blog. And so it's very dismissive. It's very dismissive. It's like, oh, you're a little blog. Like that kind of um, description of it. And it's just very dismissive. And and it makes me believe Gabby even more that he didn't support her because he said that. Because he said her own little blog. And so then he says, so like every time, and then he doesn't finish his thought. And he says, we had a nice morning. So he says morning again. (laughs) And this is conflicting because she said... You know, they fought all morning, and then it was a rough morning. And he's like, no, actually, we had a nice morning. (laughs) So you have these two people telling you two completely different things, and they're both referencing twice each. Actually, she said it three times. He said it twice this morning time when this is 4 or 5 o'clock in the evening. And, you know, they had two totally different views of what this day was like. So Brian continues, he goes, but um, she got worked up as we were trying to go get going and getting our day going. Officer then asked him about the scratches on his face and Brian said that she had her cell phone in her hand and that is why he was pushing her away. And the video is, this part, the words and the caption are all weird on the footage. So I couldn't really make it out, but it sounded like he said he had the keys because then he says so i can walk away and i said let's take a breather and that let's not go anywhere let's just calm down for a minute she was worked up she had her phone and she was trying to get the keys i know i shouldn't have pushed her but i was trying to push her away to go you know let's just take a break (laughs) which is just crazy because he says i know i shouldn't have pushed her but i was trying to push her away well, okay, Brian. Interesting. All right. Okie dokie there. And it's also interesting because he's trying to like, oh, you know, I was trying to be the cool one. I was trying to be the one that was like, hey, hey, everything's cool. Let's just calm down. Let's just take a little walk, a little breather. No big deal. All's good. Yet he took the keys from her and he locked the van. And it's her van. <laughs> and... We know later that he tried not to let her in the van. That's not a way to defuse the situation, but I'm just saying. So this second officer walks up behind Brian after speaking with Gabby, and you can tell that this second officer made him uncomfortable, and it definitely distracted him from telling the story, so he's kind of all over the place. And he actually turns to look at what the officer was doing when he was speaking with Gabby. And he continued to look back and forth between him and the one that he was talking with to begin with. Once the other officer walked up behind him and to the side of him. And then Brian said, as you see, she got me up here. And he's referencing his scratches on his face. And the officer asks to see his hands. He puts his hands out and the officer points out one mark on his hand. And Brian says that it was from a wire. And so the officer says, well, tell me about hitting the curb. And when the officer said, tell me about hitting, he, you need to go watch it. 
carefully because Brian does a triple blink before the officer finishes his question with that curb. Brian's like, oh, hitting the curb was her grabbing the wheel. And so the officer didn't know that info because Gabby had not said anything about that. And so he asked Brian, like, she grabbed the wheel? And Brian confirmed yes. He said she was like, I can't believe you're getting pulled over. And she grabbed it. The officer goes, well, what about the speed? Did she take over the pedal? No, if I was going fast, I'm sorry. It's probably just a moment of, you know, I'm still shaking. Adrenaline of seeing the lights flashing. Welp, I think we uh, have a partly better understanding of why Brian is currently on the run. That says a lot right there, right? It wasn't even a month later that you did that, Brian. He continues. Then her grabbing the wheel. So if I sped up, I'm sorry about that. If I was speeding beforehand, sorry about that. And then the officer tells him it took quite a while to speed up to him. Brian's like, oh, I'm sorry. We were just going into the park again to get water. Because we have a six-gallon water container to fill up. So we're just going to get water for the hike. Huh? Why mention this water right now? (laughs) Is that like an explanation for why he was speeding to go get water? I don't know. It was odd just to to randomly talk about water. I I don't know why. I mean, he originally just said that he didn't know he was speeding, and if he was speeding, he was sorry, and he thinks that it was partly because of her yelling at him, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, after this officer says, like, hey, it took me a while to catch up to you, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, we were going to get water. What? (laughs) So you started speeding up in front of a police officer because you were on your way to go get water? Okay. I don't know. So then Brian goes back to the incident. I was trying to keep everything calm and quiet because we're still planning on going on a hike. The officer then asked Brian for his ID, but it was in the car, and Brian was sitting on a curb, and he started to get up to go get it, and the cop's like, no, 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 we'll just do it like this, take a seat. Brian says, you know, well, if you want to come with me, I can get it, but the officer, like, completely dismisses this idea as... The officer is getting his information. Brian continuously is looking over to the car that Gabby is in. And another officer is speaking to her as if he was trying to see what was happening. And this ID thing I thought was also weird. I don't know if you guys have ever been pulled over before, but uh, that's like one of the first things they ask for is the ID. And he's like, it's in the car. I can go get it. He's like, no, 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 no. I'll just, I'll just tell me your information. What? You're not going to run his license? Really? Okay. It's just weird. Uh, I've just never seen that done before. So then Brian asked to sit in the shade because he's bald. Seriously? Really, bro? You got all these officers out there questioning you? And you're worried about your bald head? Which, in a way, is kind of a little funny, given the fact that everybody right now is out there looking for a bald-headed Brian a month later after this incident. Just a little funny. And at this point, there was three officers on the scene now, and one was with Brian, and there was a second one with Gabby, and then there was a few other ones. And Gabby was in the SUV talking to one of the officers, and she starts to demonstrate how Brian had grabbed her face, which was sort of like a mouse grab. So it's almost like he took his whole hand and took her mouth and covered his her mouth with his hand as that's his way of pushing her away. Which, can we talk about that for a second here? Because I think this is really key to the whole story. If he was pushing her away, let's say she was, let's just say she was being aggressive to him, okay? And which I think I know why she was being aggressive to him, but let's just say that she was, and she was coming at him, boom, 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 like acting, you know, all crazy. Sometimes women go a little too cuckoo. Um, and I could say that because I'm a woman. And let's just say she was doing that, and you're trying to act like you were trying to be the cool, calm, collected one. Like you were trying to calm it down. Don't worry, officers. I was the cool one. And 
you described like you had to push her away to get to the point that you guys could go calm down. But the way you ended up pushing her was by taking your whole hand and covering her mouth. And the way she demonstrated it was that he was actually squeezing her cheeks into her mouth. And I'm kind of doing it right now. That's why my voice sounded differently. Ready? Like this. Okay. Really? That's how you push somebody away? You don't kind of like elbow them? You don't kind of just push past them? She was 110 pounds for Pete's sake. He's a little thing too. You, but he's bigger than her. You're telling me you couldn't get past this woman without pushing her by her mouth out of the way? Really? And, and, and I'm saying this because she's telling the officers this. He's admitting to pushing her away. And yet we want to say that she was the main aggressor here, which she may have been aggressive, but what was going on that made her aggressive? There was a lot going on, as a matter of fact. There was a lot that could have made her aggressive. And hell, if I was her, I would have been probably aggressive too. And I'm not even really an aggressive person. But that's besides the point. So she starts demonstrating this to the officers. And she shows that, you know, the way he grabbed, his hands were basically sitting on her cheek. Because he had his whole hand over her mouth to push her. And so when she's describing this, she's obviously very upset. And she starts to put her hand on her cheek to kind of rest it on there like she was soothing her cheek. Now, I didn't see if she had any wounds or anything like that because she's sitting in a car. It's very hard to see. I actually didn't see on camera them checking her for any wounds. That doesn't mean that they didn't because there was other officers there and we didn't see their view. And the reason why I think this might be key here is a number of reasons. One, there could have been another incident just like this. And instead of pushing her away like that, he never pushed. He just put her, his hand completely over her, her mouth and, uh, you know use his hand and in, in, uh, his fingers to hold her nose and mouth and pushed her down or possibly pushed her mouth and then was pushing her down into something, whether that was the ground, the car, something. And I hate even getting into these details, but, or because the mouth and your neck is not very far from one another he may have done something similar where he was trying to push her or physically assault her not even a defense push and strangled her in very similar way that he grabbed her mouth during this incident he might have grabbed her neck in the next incident so the one she starts describing the way he grabbed her face to push her it kind of made my stomach hurt a little bit watching her do that because my immediate thought was that this could actually be how she died and how she was killed in the sense that she could have been pushed by her mouth into something or, you know, suffocated in that, that kind of way or strangled since the neck isn't far from the mouth. So when Gabby's doing that, she looks down after she suits her cheek and she said that she yelled at him and she said, when you turned your lights on, I kind of punched his arm and the officer asked if Brian was usually pretty patient with her and Gabby slightly paused and then she shook her head. Yes. And she said, yes, as she was crying, but I, then she says, I guess it just makes me sad. And after that, you can't tell what she says because the audio goes all messed up. And there's no caption. You don't know what she's saying. And so this officer starts to tell her about him and his ex-wife. And he says to her, this might be bad for your soul. I'm not telling you what to do with your life. But if you know you have anxiety, look at the situations you can get into. You know what I mean? As he gestures to the vehicles and the officers. 
We're not here to be mean to you or anything. Well, you know, there is a first time. And then it usually, and then he does this hand gesture, like spiraling. So what he's saying is there's a first time and then it usually ends up spiraling. And obviously this is both sad and wild that he said this because it exactly happened like that. If he is guilty of her her death, there was a spiral and it happened a hell of a lot sooner than later. And the main officer who had been talking to Brian is was now listening into Gabby talk to this other officer about Brian, you know, pushing her face. And so she he asked Gabby, Did you grab the steering wheel? And she says, No, I didn't. I didn't touch the steering wheel. But only for like a second, because I saw the lights come on, and I was, it was more like, you're an idiot. So he asked her in a different way, because clearly that answer isn't clear enough. And he says, did you grab the ceiling wheel, or swerve it, or anything? And she immediately says, no, 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 I didn't touch the steering wheel at all. And she shook her head, and she made eye contact with him while doing so. And at this point, a park ranger, a female, arrives at the scene. We've heard from her. She talked about how she was very candid with uh, Gabby during this stop and that she actually had told her that maybe this relationship wasn't good for her. That's her claim. We have not seen her body cam footage, if she even has any. Well, she actually, she might because she's said in an article that she did have it and she just hasn't watched it, is what she said. So now this main officer is trying to regroup, right? So he walks back over to Brian now and he tells Brian, hey, you know what? Tell me the story again. Start from the beginning. And Brian responds, I don't want to go too far back. Huh? Hmm? Why not, Brian? Why don't you want to go too far back? But we've been in this area for a week or so, and the flies have been intense. So the flies have definitely been getting to her, and then my feet are dirty and everything. So I think our little squabble was started because we were hanging out at the coffee shop. And then we got back to the van, there was some dirt and stuff in the van, and I moved our food around and because it was a little disorganized. And she gets a little, but we just had a little disagreement there, and she was just getting a little worked up. And at this point, he gets interrupted because they were asking him if he wanted to uh, water. And, you know, he's saying here that it was her that was bothered by these flies. But I, I kind of find that hard to believe because when they got pulled over to begin with, he's the one who first mentions flies. And then he mentions it again. And then the third time that he mentions flies, he's like, oh, she was bothered by the flies. Well, Brian, guess what? You mentioned the, bl- fr- the flies twice, three times altogether. Really? You sure as hell sound like you were bothered by the flies. So then the officer said, okay, so what was the disagreement about? He said, I wouldn't call it a disagreement. It's just that I'm dirty and I can't change being dirty. Like I got dirty feet. I got sand on my flip flops and stuff like that. We were at the coffee shop for so long there from nine to three. There was a few little things, little things, little relationship things, lots of little things. How was he dirty? And how did he stand on his flip-flops if they were at the coffee shop from 9 to 3? Just a question. Why was he dirty? There should be no reason he was dirty. He goes on to say, We weren't physical. Before the point, I said, All right, let's just calm down. Let's take a breather and like walk away for a minute. So I locked up the van. I was like, I'll go for a walk this way, and you can go for a walk that way on the block. It was the Moonflower. That's a nice area. It's all shaded, man. He really, really likes the shade, right? Because he mentioned earlier that he didn't want to sit in the sun because he's bald. And all I can think to this right here is maybe the FBI really needs to be checking some shaded areas because Brian don't like his head exposed. He continues... So he says, let's go for a little walk, take a breather, come back. Like nothing ever happened. She got worked up and she had her phone in her hand and and keys and everything. And she wanted, and then he says, no, no, not the keys. B, 
because though he just said that he locked the door. So he catches himself and says, no, not the keys, her rings, her phone. I was looking for the keys. And then he looks in his pocket as he's talking because I didn't want her to go anywhere. I didn't have my phone. I don't even really have a phone. So it goes, if she goes off without me, you know, I'm on my own. So I was like saying, let's just go for a walk. So he says that she wanted uh, the keys and that she, or she had the keys. He said she had the keys, she had her phone and everything. But then he's like realizes like, well, she couldn't have had the keys because I just told you that I locked the doors. And then he's like, no, 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 it's not the keys, her rings, which I don't know how you get mixed the keys up with the ring, but whatever. And so then he talks about how he was looking for the key. And I think he means he was looking for the key when they were fighting because he wanted to lock the door because his whole idea was like, let's just go for a walk, which I don't buy, Brian, by the way. And we're going to get to that. So she was trying to get the keys to me. I did not get overly physical. I was just trying to keep her away and not get hit, not get hit by her. And then I got really loud, so that probably got driver's attentions, because I was like, leave me alone, back away. So the officer asked, so you said you pushed her to create some distance, obviously? Yeah, that's what he's telling you. (laughs) And this is a really bizarre way to create distance and try to get her to calm down by pushing her by her mouth, but okay. That's basically everything but diffusing a situation. Anyways, the officer asked what happened after that and, he's, and how he got the scratches near his eye. And he says, her phone. I don't know what kind of assault weapon type phone she had, but I've never known a phone to cause scratches unless the screen is broken and it scratches one of your fingers. So you pushed her and she hit you? The officer asked and Brian's like, it wasn't like a push. And she jumped on me. She was already, I don't know, say, swinging. And then he checks his wounds and he goes, I guess it's fingernails. I'm not complaining. The officer's like, is it bruised or tender? He's like, no, 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 I'm fine. And I love her. I hope she doesn't have too many complaints about me. He, he, he. Like he does this little nervous laugh. I just, you know, feel bad. I wasn't trying to get too public. I was just loud to make her calm down. I was like, look, everyone is watching. So he's admitting that he's yelling at her to calm down. What are you doing, Brian? You're yelling. So are you calm? No. (laughs) So the officer walks away and he comes back and he asks him if he takes any medication or anything like that. He says, no. He goes, are you this normally hyper? And Brian really didn't seem hyper to me. He seemed very jittery and nervous, more so than actually hyper. And Brian says, well, my heartbeat went up whenever the lights went on. And the second officer that's standing there asked if Gabby was on any medication, and Brian immediately replies, she's just crazy. And then laughs and smiles. And you can tell he was waiting to see if they were going to laugh with him and when they didn't he got really serious and said no no I don't think so not that I know of which is an odd answer but given he lived with this woman in not only Florida but this van for months so you know Gabby was claiming she had OCD and anxiety and her her father said that that's not true she she was an organized person but she doesn't actually ever been diagnosed with OCD and she wasn't on any type of medications And she's very clearly upset right now, right? And there's a total difference between these two people. He's cool, calm, collected, everything's good, and she's in the car, like, crying mess, okay? And he's saying, you know, well, no, she's just crazy. Just, just an awful thing to say. And he didn't say it even seriously. He said it, uh, in a joking manner. And he was really looking for those cops to give him the feedback by laughing back with him. And they didn't do that. So then they start small talk. And this is where Brian kind of becomes little buddies with the officers. And it's a little, it's a little, uh, I'm not saying that cops need to be jerks. 
and most of them are not jerks so why would they need to be jerks to you but i just this this whole uh where they start kind of get a little too comfortable with brian was making me a little uneasy but that's looking at it in hindsight of course and then brian goes on to talk about you know going to portland and the officer talks about he's from california and and brian mentions that their goal was to work on an organic farm once they got over to washington state and then they were going to go down to oregon and then to california and i had to wonder if this is truly gabby's goal or was this just his goal i mean her thing was the blog maybe the farm was a part of it i don't know and we're never gonna know so now here comes the the beard officer the one who stopped at the moonflower before he arrived at this scene, the one who got the name and number of the one witness at the moonflower. And Brian perks up because this one walks over to them and he says, I just spoke to the witness. And then him and the other officer, the main officer and beard officer, that's what I'm going to call them, walk off to the side away from both Gabby and Brian to talk about what this witness said. And this is the part that gets me really upset. This is the part that actually really nags at me. So they walk over to the side and Beard Officer is telling the main officer that the witness he called said that he never saw the male strike the female. He said witness saw male trying to lock her out of the vehicle. He, and he's referring to Brian, even told us he was trying to get them to take a walk. He's talking about Brian was trying to get him and himself and Gabby to go for a walk. She was trying to get in and she actually clawed her way through the driver's door And he, meaning the witness, didn't understand why she was doing that. So, let's unpack this here for a second, okay? So, we know the dispatch said that the male was hitting the female. The one that the beard officer called was the one that he ran into at the moonflower. And his statement was a little bit different that we saw. And so he's telling this main officer that he ne- this witness is saying that he never saw the male strike the female. And then he says that you know the witness saw the male trying to lock her out of the vehicle. And then he says he he meaning Brian even told us he was trying to get them to go take a walk. She was trying to get in. She actually clawed her way through. Blah, blah, blah. The witness didn't really understand why she was doing that. (sighs) Oh, goodness. It's just, this is rough, right? Because, you know, Gabby has her side of the story that she wasn't willing to share. You have Brian's side of the story, which he definitely seemed to be downplaying. You have one witness saying this. You have one, another witness saying not total opposite of the first witness, but giving a little bit different view of what was happening. And uh, I don't know. It just doesn't sit well with me. And it, it makes me really uneasy reading this. And... And it almost feels like this officer was okay with the fact that Brian was trying to lock her out of the vehicle. And he's doing so because he's saying, well, Brian said, let's go for a walk. So he's locking her out of the vehicle so they can go for a walk. When the, the, What's missing here is that it's her van. And maybe she didn't want to go walking off by herself. Maybe she wanted to be in the safety of her own car. I mean... So it's okay that he was doing that? It's okay that he locked the van and kept the keys away from her? In what world is that okay? (laughs) I I don't understand. And so, anyways, he goes on. So he told us, you know, he was trying trying to get them to go take a walk. And the witness didn't understand why she was clawing her way through, blah, 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 blah. And so then the officer offers what he thought. He says... I think, 
It's because it was the only door that wasn't locked that she can get through. She was trying to get over him. He was trying to disengage with her. And I guess he hung her backpack up on the backs. So probably she would have her stuff so he didn't have to engage her. And this is what pissed me off. Remember what we just talked about? Brian's telling them that he was trying to be the cool, calm, collected person. So he locks up the the van and he's like, you walk this way, I'll walk that way, go calm down. And then we'll just, you know, carry on like nothing happened. And he's telling this officer that the witness said that it looked like the male was trying to, you know, lock her out of this van. And then he says, you know, Brian even told us that he was trying to get them to go for a walk. Okay, Mr. Officer Man, this is this is where I got a little. This is where I'm getting a little angry. Just bear with me. Explain to me, please, somebody. <sighs> somebody, please. If Brian's saying that he was trying to get them to go for a walk and that he locked the car or the van, okay? Why are you now saying? That she was trying to get in over him into the van. And that he hung her backpack up on the back of the van so she would have her stuff and he didn't have to engage her. I thought Brian was going for a walk. Why is he sitting in the car? I thought that disengaging was going for a walk. Right? That's what Brian said. And he really thought this out. I mean, he thought it out to the point that he took her backpack and hung it on the back of the van so she would, you know, have her stuff. Why would she need her stuff unless you were going to leave her? Why would she need her stuff? If you're telling her to go for a walk and you were going to go for a walk, why aren't you on your walk that you claimed that you were trying to go on? So much so that you wanted to go on this walk that you pushed her. And now you're giving her her backpack? It's kind of funny. You know why that's kind of funny? Because Brian had talked about how he didn't have his phone. And how if she would have left him there, he would have been on his own. Right? So he was worried because he didn't have his phone on him when this altercation was happening and he was worried that she was going to pull away and leave him. But now he's the one who actually had the keys to the van, not her. And he's the one that locked the van, allegedly, according to him, which he clearly didn't lock all the way because one of the doors was unlocked. There's only two doors and then the back doors that get in the back of the van. And so clearly he didn't lock it fully. And somehow, in the middle of all this, her backpack ends up on the back of the van. And he puts it there so she can have her stuff. Did she need her stuff to go on the walk? (sighs) Hmm. I had to pause for a second because I'm trying to curb my anger here. Because my goal was not to attack these officers in any way, shape, or form. But what bothers me here is that I am a stickler for listening for keywords and details, for looking for conflicts in statements and things of that nature when I'm discussing these cases. And this is a prime example of these officers weren't listening. They weren't listening good enough because that should have been the immediate thought was if she would, if he was trying to defuse the situation and said, you know, I lock the doors so we can go for a walk. I go this way. She goes this way. Why are you now saying that she was climbing in over over him and to get in the car? <laughs> Don't you have more questions for Brian and why the witness's statement differs from what he's claiming he did? No, he didn't do that. Let's move. So he continues. So let me reiterate what he was saying and then I'm going to 
tell you what he continues saying so that you don't get confused since I'm ad-libbing here. So he starts off by saying that the witness said he never saw the male striking the female. Witness saw male trying to lock her out of the vehicle. He, referring to Brian, even told us that he was trying to get them to take a walk. She was trying to get in and she actually clawed her way through the driver's door and he, meaning the witness, didn't understand why she was doing that. He goes on to say, I think, so he doesn't know for sure, but he says, I think it's because it was the only door that wasn't locked that she can get through and she was trying to get over him. He was trying to disengage with her and I guess he hung her backpack on the back, probably so she could have her stuff so he didn't have to engage. So twice in the statement, he says, I think and probably, meaning he doesn't know for sure. He's just assuming or guessing. Everything she says, I haven't heard what he's saying, but sounds like everything he's saying is also what the witness is saying. And the witness said he never saw him hit her. Pause. Okay. Everything she is saying, I haven't heard what he is saying. But sounds like everything he is saying is also what the witness is saying. Well, if you haven't heard what Brian has been saying, then why are you saying that it sounds like everything he's saying is also what the witness is saying? Come again? Okay. And the witness said he never saw him hit her. He saw him shove her. But he couldn't tell if it was an aggression towards her or defense as far as her being the aggressor. And unless he, meaning Brian, Brian is screaming he needs to go to jail and he did something to this girl, it sounds like to me that she was the primary aggressor. Hmm. Is that how this works? You gotta wait for somebody to scream, hey, take me to jail, I did it. Last I checked, it was doesn't work that way, right? Okay. So he says, unless he's screaming he needs to go to jail and he did something to this girl, it sounds to me like she was the primary aggressor. Again, he doesn't know for sure, right? He's guessing. So we have a lot of, I think probably it sounds he doesn't know for sure he's also saying well i don't know what he has said but sounds like everything he's saying okay what's that all about you just said in the same sentence that you didn't know what he had been saying but you're also saying that he sounds like everything he's saying is what the witness said that doesn't make any sense whatsoever unless you only heard parts of what brian's saying and you mean that you didn't hear all the things brian had to say because it that doesn't add up I just didn't know that somebody needs to be like, take me to jail, take me to jail, I did it, in order to get arrested. <laughs> oh my goodness. And he also refers to Gabby as the primary aggressor. So that's interesting as well, because, you know, primary, you know, is there a secondary? So is he saying that they were both aggressive, but that she was the main one? I don't know what he meant by that, but... This talk between the two officers is what I mentioned earlier that I think that this was a miscommunication. I think this main officer, the one he's telling, the beard officer is telling the main officer uh, about this witness. I think this guy assumed that the witness he spoke to was the same witness who dispatch had said that the witness said he was hitting her. And I want to think that he assumed that it was the same witness rather than to think that this witness officer was intentionally ignoring a second witness in the scenario or the situation, excuse me. So this is uh, at the end of the day, like I said the other day. Even if they had picked up on some of these things, it doesn't mean that it would have saved Gabby's life for sure. We don't know that because, you know, it's a part of abuse. You go back to the person 
or you stay with the person, you don't want to out the person, you don't want to get the person in trouble, and who knows where that would have went if he ended up being arrested, right? He might have come out and she might have just went right back to him. So I don't, I, I don't think that these officers are responsible for her death. I do personally believe that Brian Laundrie killed Gabby Petito. And that's my personal opinion at this point. Um, I'm not accusing him. I'm also covering my ass because I don't know how far the laundries are going to take any type of lawsuits and later down the road. I'm just saying that that's my opinion, that he killed her. And he and he alone is the one to blame in all of this. And yes, I do. I, I am one of those people that feel that a victim could play a role in their own demise. I don't think that's the case here. I don't. I just don't. Um, I'm not getting that vibe at all. And this entire situation is just very unfortunate. This little girl that we're, we see in the video, she only lived for another 15 to 18 days she didn't even make it to the end of the month, right? And what it sounds like to me is this whole I locked the door so we can both go for walks was a crock of nonsense. I think he wanted to leave her there. I do. And this is how I actually think that day went. The truth. I think they started arguing in the morning. You know, you wake up, you start cleaning up. I do it. In my house all the time. I, start, I wake up and I start cleaning up. If I didn't clean up the night before. And I think she was cleaning up. And there was stuff in there. Banned from the day prior. That's why he mentioned camping the day prior. This is how he was gotten. Had gotten dirt in the car. How he had gotten sand on his flip flops. She was upset. She was probably just bitching about it. Like women do. Myself included. <laughs> He was pissed off that she was bitching about it because he's like, well, nothing I can do about it. We're living out of this van. What do you want me to do? I'd have to take the car to go get vacuumed, blah, blah, blah. And they started fighting, okay? And I think they went to this coffee shop because she wanted to work on her blog, which he refers to as the little blog. And he was annoyed. I think he wanted to go on this hike that he mentioned because he said that he wanted to get going with his day. And they were probably fighting because she was stressed out and she was trying to work on her website and he kept bothering her about finishing because he wanted to go hiking. And so they were fighting at the, the Moonflower. And something with this phone, something happened with this phone, whether it was because he was trying to take her phone from her so she couldn't work from her phone as well or or something. There was something with the phone at some point. I just feel like there was something with that phone. And they start fighting. I don't know what happened from when they were walking on the sidewalk. The one caller said that they were, uh, he was hitting and slapping her. They walked up and down the sidewalk and he continued to hit her before getting in the van. That's what one said. I don't know what happened at that point, but this is what I think really happened. I don't think that Brian locked the car for them to go on a walk. I don't. I think he locked her out of the car or he was trying to lock her out of the car and she jumped at him like he said that she did and she was trying to prevent him from doing that and when he got in the car he was attempting to lock the doors okay I don't know if their van had automatic locks I don't know some cars don't right some vans I don't know but I think he was attempting to. But before he can actually finish doing so, she was trying to get in the van. And maybe, you know, either the window or the door, there's conflict on that too as well. And she was trying to claw her way into the van because she didn't want to be left. And this explains why he had scratches. Because as she's climbing over him, she's kind of clawing at him to get to the other side of the van to sit in the passenger seat. And I think he was full of crap. <laughs> he was totally full of crap talking about how he locked the, the doors and was going to go for a walk. 
The witness even said that it appeared like he was trying to lock her out of the van and leave her. And there was talk with the witness that there was a backpack on the back of the van. Like he had put it there so she would have her stuff. If you're going for a walk, why do you need your bag with your stuff? You're just going to take a walk to calm down. So, to that note, I say, if my boyfriend, fiance, husband is not supportive of my blog, is annoyed with me because I'm working on it and I'm trying to put my heart and soul in it and it's bothering me because he selfishly wants to go for a hike instead and wants me not to be working on what's something that's important to me. And then we go outside and he's fighting and arguing with me and then he attempts to lock me out of my own van and possibly even leave me, you know what? I would go all Wolverine on his ass too. I'm just saying. I would too. Okay? You kidding me? Who wouldn't? So this whole primary aggressor? Really? Really? How about he told her to calm down? He... Uh, pushed her face instead of just walking past her. She's not that big, or she wasn't that big. Took her keys. Locked, tried to lock her out of the van. No, no, no. She was the primary aggressor. And let's not ask Brian why the witness is saying that you were in the car when you claim that you locked the car to go for a walk. Let's not talk to you about that at all. That's just completely conflicting, but hey, no, no, let's just wrap this up and get this done, right? And I want to say this is really hard for me to do. It is because I'm, if any of you know me in real life, I'm a huge law enforcement supporter. I really am. I'm one of the first people to defend them. And so it's really hard for me to be transparent with my feelings about how this was handled. And I know everybody's saying there was nothing they could do and they handled it the best they could. But I get all that. And I get we're all looking at this in hindsight, trust me. But the signs of abuse are going to be there whether you're looking at it in hindsight or you're looking at it in the moment. And there needs to be training on how to not overlook that. Brian manipulated that situation in a very big way. And if there's all these little signs, it's all right there for all to see. The only thing in hindsight that sucks is that you know what happens and you know how it ends. You know that these officers had deemed him the victim and she ends up being the actual victim. victim. And not just from a little scratch on his face, but by death. I said the other day, and I'll say it again. I'd really, really, really love to hear from these officers, whether it's a statement, a press conference, or uh, where they do this investigation that they've opened into this, and we get any information from that. I need something. I need something. I need some kind of acknowledgement from these officers Where they go, you know what, we went back and looked over that body cam footage because we were really upset when we heard that Gabby was missing and then she was found murdered. And we went over our own body cam footages over and over and over again. And we just want to say that, you know what, there were things that could have been handled differently. There were things that we missed. And we are so sorry for that. That's what I want to see. Now, legally, I don't think they did anything wrong. Besides the fact that they let him out of the car, like, without even checking him for a a weapon, but that's not technically legally. Um, And the whole ID thing is a little odd as well, that they just said, hey, give me your information, rather than asking him for his ID. So I don't think they, what their solution was, was there was anything wrong with their solution. I just think that there was a lot overlooked. And I would like to see a little bit of ownership of that in light of the fact that this girl is now dead. And again, and I said it earlier and I have to say it again before somebody jumps at me. 
I am not saying that had they handled this differently or saw the signs, that that means they would have prevented her death. Because that there's no way of knowing that. She could have just stayed with him after he got out if he had been arrested. So I'm not saying that at all, actually. And I don't want to put that on them, right? They should have, could have, would have. I'm not going to do that. It's not fair. The only person to blame would be Brian if Brian is indeed guilty for her murder. Period. End of story. Nobody else. But it is a shame. And it is really hard watching that. On that note, we're going to have a part two of this, but it won't be for a day or so because I need to go through it and watch it and process it and do what I do. Uh, I do have an update on the case from today. Right now it's after midnight though and my computer is actually almost dead while I'm recording this. So I'm actually going to do that update uh, tomorrow morning and upload it and it will be for today, Tuesday's updates about the case. So until then, I'll see you next time.